Are you tired of having your HDR grades look nothing like your SDR creative intent? And if you are, you're not alone. So is also Steve Yadlin, who recently made an absolutely amazing video explaining why it matters and why it is important to make those to work. And inspired by his approach, I created a DCTL that is going to help you achieve exactly that. And in this video, I'm going to explain you how to use it um, why it's important and how you can preserve your SDR creative intent in HDR grades. Before we dive in, let me just cover a couple of technical aspects of this approach and for you to understand uh, how suddenly this has become a topic. Um, so just so you know, the idea of making your SDR and HDR grades is not necessarily new. It has been used in Hollywood in the past. Even I remember Walter Volpato sharing with us how he grades HDR and how he kind of just takes SDR grades and adapt them to an HDR screen. Um, and basically, the Steve Yedlin's uh, video has now just made its point really, really important and I can imagine that many of you are going to have cinematographers as clients who will come and who are going to want to do exactly the same. And I have also been approached and asked, hey Dado, how is it possible? How can we actually achieve exactly the same result? And in that video, what Steve Yedlin does is he has uh, two monitors one is sdr and one is hdr side by side yet they perfectly match now here is a couple of things that is really important to understand uh, steve Allen is not using sdr monitors in 100 nits so this is one of the first myths that he debunks completely and as a matter of fact most SDR monitors today uh, can be and usually are brighter than 100 nits which is kind of some standard or idea to how we should be calibrating our SDR monitors. So most of you already have good quality SDR monitors that are not necessarily getting milky when they get a little bit brighter and the chances are that they operate in a range between 200 to 300 nits. So if you have been shooting on set using this type of monitors and then you have been developing your looks sometimes also emulating film using this type of monitors and then you also went and you graded your show using this type of monitors then switching suddenly to hdr makes a big jump and it just feels that all that work and all that creative intent and all the time you spend working on that image that looks absolutely wonderful actually at you know 200 to 300 nits brightness um, uh, you know feels almost like being thrown away and that we have to start everything from the beginning again so the idea is that we take that image and we then translate it to a HDR monitor so how do we do that? So this is actually a two-step process. So first, what we need to do is we need to reference our SDR monitor and SDR by standard is not absolute. That means it's relative. The brightness is not really specified by the standard. It's dependent to whatever your monitor settings are. So first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to reference the brightness of your SDR monitor. And then the DCTL is automatically going to translate that to your HDR monitor that by its own standard is absolute. It needs to have exact value. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to match the brightness and tonal response of those two monitors. The second aspect that we need to work is color because the HDR monitors operate in a larger gamut of P3D65 or Rec 2020. So what we need to do is we need to take that Rec 709 grade you created and put it inside or like this is where the term container like you know we have to like con just put it into this Rec 709 container and that container then has to live inside p3 d65 or rec 2020 color space of your monitor but without necessary changing color this is why it's easiest for you to remember why this 
VCTL is called SDR to HDR container because this is all it's going to do. It's going to take your existing grade and it's going to position it as a container, as its self-contained element inside the space of much larger and much brighter HDR monitor. Okay, so let me show you now practically how to do that. So I have a here an IDT and then um, here in my primary I just like I lifted it a little bit uh, here in my show let I have a look designer that's going from RE log C to RE log C and then I'm just applying a little bit of an AGFA as a negative and I'm using the um, uh, Kodak 2383 by MPF so uh, that gives me like a that little bit kind of like a, that kind of filmic feel right and then here on the ODT side I'm again using a look designer and I'm going from ARRI log C2709 by ARRI so yeah just a standard like a basically 709 output with a little film emulation okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go now and apply this DCTL which is called SDR to HDR container okay so there is a couple of things first we need to do so the first thing we need to do is we need to get our SDR screen brightness by default it says 100 you know it can go um, to uh, whatever you know <laughs> value you want it goes down from 50 so let me just turn it on so that you can see so basically that this is now m mapping your HDR screen to match my kind of you know 50 nit screen it can go all the way up to you know 1000 nits if if you have an SDR screen that goes that far but I doubt that you do so you know this is something you need to measure or I'll show you how I compare it side by side and then I establish where it is but normally like I would say my screens are around 180 nits in SDR so that would be basically good value and then I'm also then selecting here a container so there is an option to go for P3D65 at 1000 nits or REC2020 at 1000 nits so this is basically just m managing that color part um, that I spoke about you know that, that we are putting the REC709 inside Okay, because my screen here is not uh, an HDR screen, this doesn't look quite track to you. So, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to apply a little color space transform at the end so that I'm going now from Rec 2020 to ST2084. And as you can tell, I'm basically back to the, my original starting point. Okay, so it's perfectly well round tripping. But what I did as well is I kind of created here a little, you know, example um, that simulates to, you know, the, the, the demo that Steve Yedlin does. Um, so here, uh, basically on my uh, left hand side, um, uh, like this is my left hand side, I have my um, uh, SDR output, right? So there is like a basically my IDT show that and I'm just going to Rec 709. Okay, I have just applied here a little scalar kind of so that it, it shows this image as a side by side, right? So basically, this is my kind of, you know, so this image here, keep in mind, this is my original SDR image. Okay, so now I'm going to go to this image here. And here I'm going to go now to my SDR to HDR container. And then here you see by changing my my... Um, you know, uh, uh, absolute brightness of my SDR screen, I'm able to match my two screens. So you see, I can see that, that, that this screen is definitely not 100 nits, it's more like at around 200 nits because now that I'm driving at around you know 200 you see I'm getting like a similar level of brightness there so this is another way how to do it you normally will have like a two screens and SDR and HDR screens side by side and then you'll be able to match them but what's most important is you see is this the color is also matching because um, I am now going um, and telling it hey just put my REC 709 grade in REC 2020 PQ 1000 color space and you see I'm, I'm seeing even though I'm in the REC 2020 color space I'm seeing exactly the same match 
Um, now, uh, the only difference that I have here is that I'm using this adapter and I'm going to explain in details uh, in my next video more what this adapter does. This is a second DCTL we created, um, which basically converts now from uh, my HDR to SDR and it's using a, a particular method to do that. So yeah, it's really simple, not a lot to complicate. We love, you know, simple DCTLs with not tons of adjustments. There is a, you know, really, you know, one option for you to set your screen brightness and, you know, what's your mastering color space and that's it. The DCTL does all the rest. If you like this DCTL, um, then I would like to invite you to join our Art of Color research group. This month we are working primarily on a research of um, HDR, which is actually a great timing since our master students of color training are also doing HDR training. And in addition to this DCTL, this month we are releasing one more DCTL, which is a completely different approach to HDR. We live in postmodern era, so there is more than one way how to do HDR. And if you're interested to find out about the second HDR DCTL, then follow the link below. If you're here for the first time, you probably wonder, what is Art of Color Research Group? So this is a, a group that we created um, where professional colorists and uh, graduates of a master's program of color training join and continue improving their knowledge. So you get access to a large library of white papers and research papers from fellow students. You get every month uh, new DCTLs and new tools developments. We also have a special AI tools that help you write your own DCTLs. And we have lots of really interesting things planned as well as you get new lecture every month. This month we're learning about the physics of light and the next month we're learning about scripting and retouching so lots of really interesting content if this is something that might rock your boat or you could be interesting i suggest just head over to color.training and check out art of color research group i want to thank you for watching this video all the way until the end i think this is absolutely amazing and uh, for me now that i'm starting to make more videos like this it would Help me a lot if you are to like or subscribe or leave comments below to what more you would like to learn about and it will help me to understand whether these videos are useful and if they are useful what uh, should be next content that we should be creating. Thank you very much for being part of this journey and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon.